Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, a very, very beautiful day again. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think we take for granted a lot of the gifts that the Almighty has bestowed upon us. You know, this morning I was having a chat with a friend of mine and we were speaking about the difficulty and the shortage of water in the city of Cape Town, which is not very far from us. And uh, we should all be concerned, even though we may not be in Cape Town, we should all be concerned about this precious gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has uh, instructed us reminded us time and again about the conservation of water and the fact that it is such a great gift of the Almighty, we don't realize its value. At that time in the desert, they used to have very little water. So obviously, whatever they had was very, very much appreciated. Uh, so much so that when we look at the way the Prophet, peace be upon him, washed himself, he used very little water to actually clean himself. And uh, with us, we have this problem of turning on the tap. And in order to get the water to come uh, the way we want it in terms of temperature, we leave it running. And we leave it running so much that uh, buckets have gone down before the temperature is correct for us to actually be, you know, use the water. We're spoiled. I think that's a very, very important point that we need to raise. No matter where you are on the globe, ask yourself, do I let the water run from the tap? Remember, this is good water. It's pure water. In most countries, you can actually drink it as well. Uh, do I just let it run because the temperature is wrong uh, for my liking? Or, or would I use it even if it were cold? And if you don't want to use it, you need to make sure that you collect that water that ran down that tap uh, before it became warm in a bucket or somewhere and make use of it because I promise you when we don't appreciate the gifts of the Almighty he snatches them away and secondly he may even choose to punish us we don't like to speak about the punishment of the Almighty but it's a reality it's something all religions and all faiths believe in that there is an element and there is something known as the punishment or the wrath of the Almighty, which we need to protect ourselves from. Now, in Islam, we do know that you seek forgiveness and the Almighty forgives you immediately. So it's a religion based on mercy and the forgiveness of the Almighty, and that's what keeps us hopeful. So no matter what you've done, you always have hope in the mercy of the Almighty. And when you turn back, you actually know that the Almighty has forgiven me. And we shouldn't be allowing the devil and shaitan to make us think for a moment that we're not forgiven because that's another trap of the devil but going back to this habit if we were to seek the forgiveness of the almighty and not change that habit then we have a major problem so i wanted to dedicate these few minutes today to actually highlight the issue of water and uh, if you take a look at the last tweet that I have and the last post on Facebook that I have, it's all about water. I might actually post again about the same thing because no matter where we are on the globe, we need to make sure that we do not let the water run in a way that it's wasted. It's wasted. And I promise you, even the showers we have, sometimes we just turn the shower on, we're feeling good. So we stand under the shower. Look, it's happened to me in the past. I've become more conscious of it. And I seek the forgiveness of the Almighty for the times when I was not so conscious about how much water I was using. But we would, you know, stand under the shower, for example, and enjoy that shower just because it's there and it's available. Not thinking of how much water is actually being used, how many liters are actually going just because I'm feeling good about it. It. So you turn on the shower, you know, you let your you let the water run on your body, you turn it off, you can soap yourself up uh, thoroughly and you turn it on again and wash off the soap. That's the basic. You might want to enjoy slightly depending if there is a lot of water, you might want to take a, a minute or two more. But I would say even that be conscious of it because a day may come. You may not realize how much you're contributing towards the saving of water that people have actually now pushed the date of what they call, you know, the zero, uh, day zero. Uh, they've pushed it further because of people saving water and also because of perhaps a little bit of rain here and there that the Almighty has bestowed upon us, which we thank the Almighty for. So my brothers and sisters, you know, one is drinking water. We're not too worried about that because people do drink uh, the water. Uh, and I don't think people would actually waste that. You can, you, you know, you drink the water, it's being used in a proper way. Drinking is important. But more than that is 
the way we waste water when it comes to bathing. You know, I could go and speak about gardening. I could go and speak about... I remember a time in my own yard, and I live here in Zimbabwe, in Harare, where it's very green. There is no shortage of such of water. And I remember telling my family that, you know what, according to me, I'd rather have... Um, a garden that doesn't look so green and I've saved water than to waste water when the world needs it. So, uh, you know, they looked at me and said, I think, you know, you, you're going beyond, uh, you know, what's normal. And I think, you, yes, it's good to have greenery. It's good to have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a beautiful scene, for example, to maintain and to keep up the upkeep of your yard, your garden, etc. We've got huge gardens, an acre, three quarter acre. I think half an acre is obviously uh, probably the majority Majority of uh, people in the uh, low density area would probably have half an acre of land. The, the low density areas go into two, three acres, a few sometimes. So it's amazing how much land you have. Uh, imagine if you were to, at a time when water was needed, be seen to be irrigating, wasting the water. I think that we need to become more conscious of this. Yes, it's good to have it, but let's not waste it. So let's not just leave the taps running. Whenever there is a burst pipe, sort it out immediately. Whenever there is something, you know, water running, I see sometimes due to infrastructural, uh, perhaps, uh, what can I say, flaws, or maybe how old the pipes may be, you see a burst pipe and it goes on for days on end. I mean, it goes down the street. No one does anything about it. Sometimes you call authorities a few times to say there is a problem here and they send you from pillar to post. You don't know who to report to and who to talk to. But what I am saying here is we should be doing something about it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're in authority, make sure that you do something about the water leaks across the cities. And at the same time, if you're just a normal citizen or resident, make sure you don't waste water. And make sure that even if it is just something that we're all guilty of, almost all of us are guilty of leaving the tap running, right? Almost all of us are guilty of leaving the, the tap running because of the temperature of the water. And sometimes we leave it running while we're brushing our teeth and the water is just running. Why? Why? Let's teach our children that let's become conscious of it. Sometimes we, we let the water run uh, just because, you know, we're... Uh, taking our time, maybe scrubbing our face and so on. Wait, there is water going. Look at how many liters. A bucket, two buckets have already gone down just because you left it running. I think we need to become conscious of this. I hope that was a good message, my brothers and sisters. Uh, yes, let me read a few of your comments here. And just for your information, on my YouTube channel, which, is, uh, which you will find on YouTube, uh, a copy of this these live sessions shall be posted after the live sessions so that's something interesting if you've missed out on anything we will try our best to provide you a copy of this particular session on YouTube so if you go to YouTube and you search for the verified account you will find a special folder that says the live sessions and uh, that folder has in it all live sessions inshallah starting yesterday so yesterday's session we had uh, I can't remember what exactly we spoke about but whatever we spoke about yesterday uh, it's already there and uh, subhanallah I, I pray that that will be of benefit because we don't want to lose these live sessions um, yes there are people there agreeing with uh, the water issue there are people there agreeing with uh, the fact that we need to save water mashallah uh, uh, sister Nish there is saying that you inspire me so much I want to tell you something my dear sister uh, I am inspired by others as well. I, obviously, ultimately, the Almighty, the prophets, the messengers, revelation, etc., you know, those who worked hard, uh, parents may come into the picture, other scholars, other people you interact with. I'm inspired by people whom sometimes uh, you may never guess I'm inspired by. Some of you actually inspire me. Uh, I've spoken about it in the past. I've been through a few uh, Instagram, Twitter, perhaps uh, Facebook accounts. Some are doing tremendous work. In fact, I'm wrong to say some. A lot are doing lovely, lovely work. So, uh, you know, what I want you to do is try and inspire others. Uh, try and reach out to others. You can do that. And it's extremely important to be able to... Uh, to be able to inspire others. It's very important. So don't just think you inspired me, but think about how now you are going to inspire others. And in that way, we start a trend. You know, uh, something very interesting, perhaps tomorrow I will speak about. Uh, I have a, a friend that I made recently uh, on a trip to Umrah, and he lives in London. And subhanAllah, we have a lot in common in, the, in, in, in our thinking, and uh, we're thinking about how to spread kindness on earth. 
and this issue of spreading kindness. Obviously, there are so many other issues that we would like to spread, and we've already started spreading a lot. But sometimes we feel that, you know, people are not kind to each other. People actually uh, become... Uh, selfish somehow and people forget to teach their children and and even the school children about kindness simple acts of kindness we need to speak to our children about it on a regular basis so inshallah it's something that we we will speak about in the future it's something uh, maybe tomorrow maybe later today when i get a chance uh subhanallah i see a lot of people asking me questions about braces okay fair enough Uh, if you want to know the details of why i have the braces you know i don't need to actually say it but you need to trust the fact that it's not just for show it's not just cosmetic and it's not it is it is for a medical reason uh and it was necessitated of late but at the same time uh subhanallah uh you know if someone is just wearing these braces in order to uh, change something uh, th- that was always proper, you know, it was normal, it was okay. It becomes tampering with the creation of the Almighty and we shouldn't be doing that. But if there is a, a slight flaw that you want to correct, there's nothing wrong with that. For example, your sun, your, your glasses. If there is something slight wrong, even if it's 0.25, a number, you have every right to wear those glasses. You're changing nothing of the creation of the Almighty. So the braces is something you can see. The glass is something you can see. And if your number is five, seven, may Allah grant us all good eyesight, you still have the right to wear the glasses. Nobody can come and say, well, your number is only two. Why are you wearing glasses? You know, you should just be looking at what Allah has provided you with. No, you have to understand if there is a small flaw, a small thing you have as a human being, as a Muslim, every right to rectify and correct it. But what is wrong is when you're tampering with the Almighty's creation, when there's nothing wrong with it. So if you have, for example, a bent nose, they call it a deviated septum, for example, you have every right, if you're conscious about it, to, to get it you know, slightly normal. But if it's, when I say bent, I mean properly. But if it has a slight here and there and it's considered within the, the, the limits of normal, then don't play with it. You may mess something up. So if you're just enhancing something for the sake of uh, trying to play with it and tamper with it, then you're tampering with the creation of the Almighty. But if you have a reason for it, like I told you, a deviated septum, uh, a, a lot of the cases we have... Uh, breathing problem sometimes. It could have other issues, other problems. In that particular case, there's nothing wrong in getting it done. Uh, Like I said, with your glasses, like with your teeth, and if there's something wrong with your face, or even with other organs of your body, if they're not normal somehow, or uh, they're not within what is considered okay, you have every right to rectify it and to correct it. But if it's okay and it's normal, you cannot tamper with it. You should not be tampering with it just because you want to actually look different, or you're fed up of what you've been looking like for so many years so now i just need to change my face and so on Uh, may the almighty grant us ease and may the almighty uh you know accept us all so the little scary ghost is commenting saying you know english is perfect uh my brother or sister you know firstly uh, it's quite a scary name i was almost frightened (laughs) but uh, but then again i believe that uh uh, whenever we do something, we should do it properly. We should try and perfect it. You know, the hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, teaches us that the Almighty loves those whom, when they do something, they do it properly. So if you're not going to do something properly, leave it. Don't do it. Uh, do it properly or leave it. Leave it for someone else to do. Subhanallah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Someone's asking us to pray for them because uh, a member of their family or them, they have diabetes. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. Brings me to another point. Do you care just for your sick and ill or do you care for everyone who's sick and ill? It's important while we are caring for those physically uh, whom we are in front of, uh, we might be caring for them in terms of nursing them and looking after them. We need to make sure we also consider those who are sick and ill across the globe. Some don't even have access to medication. Uh, So I think it's important to just mention this, that you know what, Uh, while we're praying for ourselves, pray for others who are having the same problem. I have a habit. I've developed it for years, and I'm sure all of you would bear witness to that. Whenever we say something, we pray for humanity. We pray for the ummah. We pray for our offspring, all of us. When you talk about people who have children, pray for those who don't. When you talk about people who, for example, uh, are being tested with sickness, pray for all of those who have a sickness, those who are struggling across the globe, not just yourself, not just your group, and so on. And this is why it's important for us to realize Uh, Like I said yesterday, uh, we are definitely people who uh, care for one another. I might differ. I might have a difference of opinion, but I care for you. 
and you should be caring for me. We are human beings. At the end of the day, we respect each other. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah speaks about in the Quran how we have honored humankind. Banu Adam means human beings. You know, the children of Adam, humankind. Allah says we have honored the children of Adam. We have given them an honor. Now, that dignity, we need to understand it. If I want respect, I need to respect others. If I want to fulfill my duty on earth, I need to know uh, that everyone else is on earth for the same purpose. Some may have understood it. Some may not have understood it. Some might have understood it differently from me. Alhamdulillah, we still uh, love each other. And mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, we should be reaching out to each other, each other. I cannot help but to... Oh, mashallah, this is my little one. Mashallah, tabarakallah. I cannot help but to uh, raise an issue, the issue of hair, subhanallah. I, I cannot help but to raise the issue of hair. Someone asked a question here about hair, right? So uh, is it okay to actually you know, get your hair, uh, if you're losing hair, what to do? Okay. Number one, I don't have hair, by the way, right? Which means very little. You can actually see it here, right? But here at the top, very little. It's I'm bald, right? And I'm proud of the fact that I'm bald because what I've realized is when you get too conscious of everything, you start becoming depressed. You don't realize the other gifts that the Almighty has bestowed upon you, and you become depressed over something that perhaps is uh, something that perhaps is not uh, extremely important. Something that is perhaps not extremely important. Now, what we also need to realize, <laughs> sorry. That's my little child, and I think they don't want to actually appear on the screen. You know, normally I, I, I wouldn't mind, actually, my family members and so on. Uh, I respect their opinion. If they don't want to appear in photographs or online, etc., wallahi, we need to respect that particular, uh, uh, what can I say, uh, respect what they want, right? So that's how it is. So I've been given instructions. Look, you can actually do what you have to, but make sure that, you know, as family members, we're not exposed to whatever you are exposed to in that particular way. So it's up to them. And that's the reason why I'm trying to actually uh, tell my daughter that, you know, she can actually move because her mom's going to tell me, why are you having her on uh, this um, live session of yours? Okay, let's go back to what we were saying. So the hair. You're allowed to do things within limits, right? So some people say, can I transplant my hair? Uh, you know, if it's your own hair from one place to another, I believe they are doing it in Turkey. There are ulama who permit that, like, you know, with your hair from one part of your body uh, to another part of your body. Uh, they're, they're, I know that they're doing it in Turkey in a beautiful way. But if you're going to buy and sell hair, I think you're entering haram territory. You know, ter these are organs of the, bo of, of the body. Uh, and we shouldn't be doing this. So uh, another thing is if, if you become depressed about it, it's not a good thing. Thank the Almighty. Uh, and don't let it affect you and bother you mentally. It's the Almighty. Learn to love who you are. I always say this, no matter what your skin color is, because sometimes people are dark in complexion and they, they become so obsessed with it because, you know, the globe is unfortunately very unfair. But the thing is, we've made it unfair. That's what it is. Uh, you need to appreciate people of color. You need to really appreciate the, the beauty that the Almighty has kept in, 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 in different shades and tans, subhanAllah. Uh, never, ever look at someone... Or look at yourself to begin with and say, I don't like the way I look. No, you need to learn to love what the Almighty has bestowed you with. And secondly, look at others and appreciate, mashallah, these people are really beautiful people and so on. This is why Islam has not given importance to your body shape. It's given importance to who you are and what you stand for. It's not given importance to your color, your race. It's given importance to who you are and what you stand for, what your sacrifice is, what you've done. And that's the reason why we are taught to wear loose clothing, because uh, if you're going to give importance to shape people are going to get depressed the same way the brother uh, is saying about hair you know people are giving importance to uh, people are giving importance so much to hair that those who don't have that type of hair they're depressed now this is where islam comes in and honestly the teachings of the almighty are so beautiful where uh, the, the importance is given to the right things i would like people to be known not for uh, their, their shape etc but rather for who they were really they must have been the most loveliest people but forget about what they're i mean five kilograms this way that way you might have a shape this way take pride in what you look like yes indeed but remember the almighty has created you differently so what you must do also is don't waste yourself and don't just say, I'm not bothered about what I look like because the Almighty won't judge us based on our looks. And then you waste your body, but, or your health, 
but rather do whatever you can and leave the rest in the, in the Almighty's hands. So don't become so obsessed with it, but do uh, as best as you can. Look after yourself, your body, your health, and uh, thereafter try and make sure that uh, you don't become depressed as to who you are and, you know, what the Almighty has given you. That's important. So, my brothers and sisters, that's a very, very important point. I think I'm going to be leaving right now. I'll come back uh, to, uh, later on, perhaps sometimes, uh, sometime. And like I've said, we could and we should always be uh, benefiting from one another. Please try to inspire one another. And uh, may the Almighty bless you all. Uh, until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.